Have you ever felt like a character in a movie? Last fall, as I prepared to go on this trip, I couldn't help but feel like the character from The Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins leaving town on a grand adventure. High peaks of the Rockies and Alps are typically my go-to hiking experience, but trekking 500 miles across northern Spain on the Camino de Santiago may be my new favorite hiking experience. So what is so great about it? I tell people there are four great things about this trip. Light pack, light wallet, spiritual, and no planning. Everyone can appreciate a light pack. Since you sleep in hostels every night, you don't need to bring food, tent, or sleeping bag. My pack weighed 12 pounds. The daily routine is simple. Walk all day through beautiful countryside. Check in at a hostel, shower, do laundry, take a nap, explore the town, eat great food, sleep with earplugs on, and do it all again the next day. You can pick up whatever you need along the way. I really appreciate the light wallet part of this trip. Lodging is only 10 to $12 a night. For a cozy bunk, food is inexpensive and high quality, and dinner comes with all the good Spanish wine you can drink. I budgeted $40 a day. The spiritual aspect of this trip is the main reason most people go. St. James, an apostle of Christ, did ministry in Spain, and his bones are interred in the cathedral in Santiago, which is the main goal and ending point for most pilgrims. This has always been a poor man's pilgrimage as dozens of trails from all over Europe converge on the city. The 500 mile section I walked is one of the more popular and starts in the French Pyrenees in the walled village of St. John. In ancient times, many walkers undertook the pilgrimage as punishment for crimes. It was either leave town and seek forgiveness from the saint or get locked up. Proof of completion was a distinctive scallop shell, now carried as a symbol by all pilgrims on the route. Spiritual seekers have walked this trail for thousands of years, even before St. James. In pagan times, the goal was the nearby peninsula named Finisterra, which literally means end of the earth. This was as far west as the known world went. Interestingly, the trail runs close by the archaeological caves of Sierra at the Puerca, where Homo sapiens date back 150,000 years. So people have lived in this region of Spain for a long time. In Montana, we think 100 years is old. One of the most enjoyable parts of the trip is the um, trail itself, which winds from town to town through apple orchards, vineyards, oak forests, and upland dry wheat fields, passing over pastoral rivers on the old Roman roads, stone houses and bridges. The architecture, terrain, climate, and customs can you continually change along the route, beginning in Basque, transitioning to Castilia, then to Meseta, Cantabrian, and ending in the Celtic region of Galicia. I still hold the vivid memory of entering Pamplona on festival night. Winding down through the foothills of the Pyrenees, we approached the walled city through the moat and across the drawbridge and entered a magical world of tangled medieval streets crowded with revelers enjoying the warm summer evening and celebrating life. The people of Spain are friendly, curious, and naturally happy all encourage the pilgrim to wake up from everyday sleep and be inspired. Most walkers receive some sort of transformation, even if that was not the main reason for the trip. In several churches, we slept on mats, cooked communal meals, sang together, and participated in candlelit ceremonies late at night in an empty church, all very magical. People from all over the world sharing their hopes and desires for their lives. Planning can be an impediment to travel, so having a trip where you just show up 
is a blessing in itself. That's right. All you have to do is get to the starting point and begin. Everything you need can be purchased along the way, and reservations for lodging are not necessary. I went with my friend Paul Shermer, though we met up with Colorado Julie the first day. She was an eminent planner, shown here with a reserved table. <laughs> so um, no need for planning when you go, when you walk with an expert. All you need is a smartphone, and many people did the entire trip just on Wi-Fi. It really is up to you. You can stay in cut-rate municipal hostels with the hordes like this one in the old church in Pamplona, or reserve smaller private hostels with four beds to a room. The prices are similar. It's probably best to mix it up for a fuller experience. Was I transformed? Most definitely. St. James works his wonders. I gained the realization that we are all one big family, like Bilbo Baggins, bumbling along as best we can and enjoying each other's company along the way. This is the day we washed our pants. <laughs> <clears throat> Would I recommend this trip to others? Absolutely. I hiked it in 35 days last September and October. I took only two rest days with one short day at the free wine fountain. <laughs> not, not surprisingly, we didn't get very far that day. <laughs> this is really a coffee shop tour with uh, beautiful countryside, quaint villages, and plenty of interesting culture along the way. A trip worth taking, even without Lederhosen and ice axe. Thank you. <laughs> 